we want to determine the exact value of sine pi over 12 using a half angle identity. The most common two half angle identities for sine and cosine are given here, though some textbooks do refer to these power reducing formulas also as half angle identities. For this example, we'll be applying this half angle identity for sine, though in the next video, we'll find the same sine function value using this equivalent identity given here. Let's begin by determining the value of a, as well as whether the sine function value will be positive or negative. Now it might be tempting to convert pi over 12 radians to degrees. Of course we could do that. Pi over 12 times 180 degrees divided by pi. Notice how the pi's would simplify out. We'd be left with 180 degrees divided by 12 equals 15 degrees. But for practice, let's go ahead and leave this in terms of radians. So notice that a over two must equal pi over 12 radians. So if a divided by two is equal to pi divided by 12 radians, to solve for a, which we need on the right side of our identity, we would multiply both sides by two. So a is equal to two or two over one times pi over 12 radians. We have a common factor of two. There's one, two, and two, and six twos and twelve. So a would be equal to pi over six radians. So applying the identity, we know that sine pi over twelve is equal to the sine of pi over six divided by two. And now before we apply this identity, Let's determine whether the sine function value is going to be positive or negative. Well, since pi over 12 radians, or 15 degrees, is in the first quadrant, where both x and y are positive, and sine theta is equal to y over r, we know r is always positive, and now we know that y is positive, and therefore the sine function value is going to be positive. And as we know, all of the trig function values are positive in the first quadrant. So we know we'll have a positive square root, and then we'll have one minus cosine a, which now we know is cosine pi over six, and all this is divided by two. Notice how the denominator of two is underneath the square root. And now for the next step, we'll determine the value of cosine pi over six, so we can use either a reference triangle or the unit circle, and let's show both. Pi over six radians is equal to 30 degrees, so in standard position, this is the initial side of the angle. The terminal side would be approximately here, where again, the reference angle is pi over six radians, or 30 degrees. So if we sketch a reference triangle, we need to recognize that we have a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle. So we can label the short leg one, the hypotenuse two, and the longer leg square root three. So using a reference triangle, cosine of pi over six radians is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which would be square root three divided by two. And of course we can check this trig function value on the unit circle. Here's the terminal side of pi over six radians, or three degrees, and because we have the unit circle, x equals cosine theta, so cosine pi over six, or cosine three degrees, is square root three divided by two, which means we now have the square root of one minus square root three divided by two, all over two. Now let's simplify this. Looking at just the numerator, we can clear the denominator of two by multiplying by two, but if we multiply the numerator of a fraction by two, we must also multiply the denominator by two. Notice how this is equivalent to multiplying by two over two underneath the square root. So now we have the square root of, when we distribute, we have two minus square root three divided by two times two, the twos would simplify to one, leaving us with just minus square root three. And our denominator would be two times two, or four. And now because we have a fraction under the square root, we can write this as the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator, which is the square root of four. 
and the square root of four simplifies to two. So this leaves us with the square root of two minus square root three divided by two. Now let's check this out in the calculator. We'll first convert this to a decimal and then approximate the value of sine pi over twelve on the calculator. Let's put the numerator in parentheses. So we have open parenthesis, second x squared for square root, and then two minus square root three. Right arrow, right arrow, close parenthesis, divided by two, enter. And now we'll compare this to sine of pi divided by twelve. Let's first make sure the calculator is in radian mode. So we'll press the mode key, go down to the third row, highlight radian, press enter. And second mode for quit, and now we'll press sine pi divided by twelve. And notice how this verifies our work is correct. There's one more thing I do want to point out though before we go. We did find the exact value of sine pi over twelve or sine fifteen degrees using a sum of difference identity as well. Though the result did look different, it is the same exact value. So let's do a quick comparison. Again, we know that pi over twelve radians is equal to fifteen degrees, which is also equal to forty-five degrees minus thirty degrees. So if we compare the difference identity for sine, given here in red, we'd have the difference of these two products, which if we simplify, would be the quantity square root six minus square root two divided by four. So using the difference identity for sine, this was the exact function value. And when we use the half angle identity, this was the exact trig function value. Again, they look quite different, though if we convert them to decimals, we can see they are the same. So depending on what method we use to find the exact value of sine fifteen degrees or sine pi divided by twelve radians, the result will look different, but the function values are the same. I hope you found this helpful.